morning and welcome back to another edition of Through the Lectionary. Today we'll be looking at the Old Testament text from Pentecost, Genesis 11, verses 1 through 9. Let us pray. Blessed Lord, you have caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning. Grant that we may so hear them, read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them, that by patience and comfort of your holy word we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So the texts for Pentecost are, are uh, familiar ones for us. Pentecost, we're looking at 50 days after Passover, which is for us 50 days after Easter. It's the summation, the climax of, of everything that we've been looking at for the last seven weeks. And finally, the promised spirit falling upon the apostles and all hearing the gospel in their own language. So, for the Old Testament that we're looking at, Genesis 11, verses 1 through 9. Now the whole earth had one language and the same words. And as people migrated from the east, they found a plain in the land of Shinar and settled there. And they said to one another, Come, let us make bricks and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone and bitumen for mortar. Then they said, Come, let us build ourselves a city and a tower with its top in the heavens. And let us make a name for ourselves, lest we be dispersed over the face of the whole earth. And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of man had built. And the Lord said, Behold, they are one people. And they all have one language, and this is only the beginning of what they will do, and nothing they propose to do will now be impossible for them. Come, let us go down, and there confuse their language, so that they may not understand one another's speech. So the Lord dispersed them from there over the face of all the earth, and they left off building the city. Therefore its name was called Babel. Because there the Lord confused the language of all the earth. And from there the Lord dispersed them over the face of all the earth. This is the word of the Lord. Okay, so this is a, a familiar text. You know, it's really one of those first uh, stories that we learn as children. The unfortunate thing about uh, it being one of those early stories that we learn as children is you hear the story and the connection that's made immediately is, you see, you can't work your way to heaven. These people were trying to build a tower that reached all the way up to heaven so that they could get to God all by themselves. And that's the result of God confusing uh, their languages. Did you hear any of that in the text? Sure, they want to build this city with a tower in the, in the tops of the heavens, or with its top in the heavens. But there's nothing about them wanting to climb that tower to get to God. There's nothing about them wanting to save themselves with their own works. It's not there. There's something more going on here. And if we back up in Genesis just a little bit, you see how early on we actually are. Genesis 11. So what has happened? Well, chapter 1, God has created the world and everything in it. Chapter 2, we get a little more detailed account of that, really looking at, at specifically the creation of man, creation of Adam and his wife. And Genesis 3, we see the fall. Genesis 4, we see uh, Cain and Abel. 5, we get a genealogy. Chapter 6 through 9 is the flood. Chapter 10 is another genealogy. And it's kind of broken in half, that genealogy, here with this, with this story. Yet we've seen sin begin to take its toll on the world, God's very good creation. And what happens there? The whole earth has one language and the same words. 
and people are spreading out. Right? These are Noah's children, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, and all of their families are, are spreading out. And they found a plain in the land of Shinar. Now, interestingly enough, the plain of Shinar, this would be over toward Babylon, uh, what we know as Babylon. And following the Old Testament, we know that Babylon makes another appearance. So this is really what would become the beginning of this Babylonian uh, Babylonian kingdom. So they settle there and they, they want to build this the greatest city on the face of the earth. Now, is there anything wrong with wanting to build a great city? The answer is no. But to what end? Come, let us build ourselves a city and a tower with the top in, its, in the heavens, and let us make a name for ourselves, lest we be dispersed. This is the problem of Babel. It's not that they're trying to build a building with a tower in the heavens so that they can climb this tower and get to God. That's not the point, and it never was the point. The point is... The, the bad part about this is, is they want to make a name for themselves. This is the result of sin. This is idolatry, right? We see this in Genesis 1. What's part of creation? Every single day, what does God do? He speaks things into existence. He separates or he orders according to kind. And then what does he do? He gives things a name. And then to Adam, right? Once everything is in creation, Adam is responsible for having dominion over all of these things. But it's the sinful nature that, that infiltrates us now that wants to take something good that God has given to us and make it into what we want it to be. So they here, already in Genesis chapter 11, want to make a name for themselves. This is idolatry. And we way, way, way too often give in to this language as the church where we just act like it's really not a big deal for somebody to go off to make a name for themselves. And maybe we don't mean it necessarily the way... They mean it here in Babel or in this idolatrous situation. But even if we don't mean it that way, you, you see how it's become. Now, look at all the confusion amongst people today about who they are. You know, it, it's, it's one of those things that people spend their lives trying to figure out who, are, who they are. What are they going to be? What are they going to do? And they look for that. They look for their self-worth and what they can make of themselves, an identity that they can create for themselves. And, and we see all the issues that begin to stem from that when we very simply look at not only who God is, but who he has called us to be, uh, first and foremost in the waters of holy baptism. So God is the one who names, not us. And once God has given us our own name, which really his own name in baptism, we don't seek to uh, change that, to alter that. And as a result of this, again, I, I don't know how much of this is necessarily appropriate for, for YouTube, but you can kind of see where I'm tracking here about you know, people being confused and, and all of this about, about who they are, um, you know, having, this, having this inner struggle between who they, who they want to make themselves to be against who God, has, who God has called them to be. So this is the problem of Babel. And this is really the problem throughout the rest of the scriptures. You know, people idol uh, in their own idolatry wanting to be someone else other than who God has, uh, who God has called them to be. You know, I think immediately about the, the period... After the judges, when we enter uh, the book of First Samuel, and the people cry out to Samuel for a king, give us a king. Why? So that we can be like all the other nations. Right? No longer were they satisfied being God's people. 
They wanted to be like everybody else. They wanted to make a name for themselves. So you see this carry on all the way through the scriptures. And it ultimately, uh, perhaps we're getting ahead of ourselves, but it, it leads to them actually going into exile to this very place, to Babylon. All right, so it's, it's just a, a big circle, right? So they're afraid of becoming dispersed over the face of the whole earth, which is exactly what winds up happening, ironically enough. So verse 5, and the Lord came down. All right, there were, they're, they're concerned with building up, and the Lord comes down to see the city and the tower which the children of man had built. Notice these are not children of the promise necessarily, right? We haven't gotten into Shem's descendants yet. And the Lord, verse 6, and the Lord said, Behold, they are one people and they all have one language. And there's nothing wrong with it. Right? This, is, this is what the, God, or the, the text from Acts really, really flips. Uh, you know, not that they have one language again, but that they're hearing the gospel in, in their own, which we'll get to very, very briefly. This is only the beginning of what they will do. But again, there's no problem with being one people and having one language. That's great. And that's how, you know, it will be in the end except being one people in one language with an idolatrous vision is is not a good thing at all so this is only the beginning of what they will do not again not like oh they'll be able to reach heaven without without me without you know god this is only the beginning of what they will do namely to bring destruction upon god's good creation uh to bring uh dishonor to God's name rather than honor because everything that they'll do will be in their name instead of God's name. So God says, come, let us go down now and there confuse their language. Again, this let us, like let us make man in our image, right? We're speaking uh, Trinitarian language here. So they're going to, God's going to confuse their language and the Lord dispersed them from the face of the earth and they left off building the city. Therefore, it's called Babel because the Lord there confused their language. That that Hebrew word sounds like uh, uh, Babel. And from there, the Lord dispersed them over the face of the whole earth. So this is not good, right? God creates and places into community. He orders according to kinds. So to have these people broken, fractured, dispersed, is not a good thing. It's seen as punishment from from God. So uh, they're separated, they're dispersed. You know, there's a very easy connection that we can make to our situation today. Right? It is not good that man should be alone, but that's you know the the separating, the scattering. This is this is what happens, uh, and it, and it's you know. Where we, uh, where we have found ourselves throughout our country, throughout the world today, um, scattered. And it is not good. And you see what has happened amongst the church, right? We can, uh, and I think I've said this before, we can romanticize this and talk about how the church is being strengthened, being a part, and all of this. But, I mean, have, have, you, have you seen what is, what is happening to these churches as, as they've become... Uh, so fractured, um, being apart, practices amongst, you know, our own denominations, uh, or our, our own denomination, with regards to the sacrament of the altar, with regards to you know something something that significant, all the way down to should you require people to wear masks or not, and and it's 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 creating struggles within the church, it's creating. Uh, further division this is not good it is not good at all and people throughout this have have begun asserting their own will over perhaps what is perhaps what is what is god's good and gracious will and this just leads to more and more fracturing more and more separating more and more spreading apart uh, of uh, of god's people and again Notice, as the reverse of this happens in Acts chapter 2, 
at Pentecost as the people are gathered there 50 days after uh, after the Passover and the Holy Spirit descends as if tongues of fire upon the apostles head and they're not all speaking the same uh, uh, language as it as if using the same words the same words that sound the same way and all of a sudden everybody's able to understand no they're speaking different languages so all the people who are gathered there uh, are able to hear so while they're not speaking the same language that that you can necessarily hear like it doesn't all sound the same they are speaking the same language confessionally and what i mean by that is they're all proclaiming the gospel that jesus christ who was crucified, is risen from the dead, is ascended into heaven, and is reigning over all creation. So you see how the church then comes together. Right? We have brothers and sisters all over this creation. And whether we're speaking English or German or Spanish or French, uh, Swahili, any of these languages, we're all proclaiming the same language confessionally that is, Jesus Christ is Lord. This confession, far beyond whatever kind of language you're speaking, this confession is what unifies us and unifies the whole church on earth. And it gives glory to the name of God. And we're not creating a name for ourselves. We are rejoicing <clears throat> and that God has taken us from this old life of sin, from being trapped under the, under the dominion of the devil and death. He's taken us from that, given us a new name in the waters of holy baptism, and has made us his own dear children. So as we gather to celebrate Pentecost, we rejoice in what God has done through Jesus Christ, through his death, through his resurrection, ascension, that he is reigning on high. And we rejoice in the name that he has given to us and that the, and the confession that we have together in one unified language, that Jesus is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Thank you for joining us for Through the Lectionary. Be sure to subscribe to this channel to be up to date on new material. Leave us a like and a comment or a question if you have one, and we'll do the best we can to get those answered. Peace be with you.